Hello friends, welcome back to Science Circle. Today we will be discussing about leaving things. Can you see a number of pictures? Now you can identify which is leaving and non-leaving, isn't it? So we can easily say from the picture that the tree, children, animals, birds, insects all belong to leaving things. Where are the others belong to non-leaving things. Now how could we make such difference? Based on which criteria are we making the difference? Just let us have a look. Now scientists have discovered a few criteria for differentiating leaving and non-leaving. So the first thing that is leaving things are made up of cells. Now what is a cell? As like making a building we use bricks same all leaving body is made up of cells. A cell is the basic building block of all living organism. It is the smallest unit of organization in a living thing. Cells are called structural and functional unit of life. Now the cell cannot be seen in the naked eyes. They can be seen only through microscope. The picture which you are seeing is a compound microscope. Depending upon the number of cells, it can be classified into two groups, whether it is unicellular or multicellular. Now you can see the picture of bacteria, amoeba, yeast, etc. Now they are all belonging to unicellular because their body is made up of only one cell. Now here are the pictures which are the examples of multicellular. What does multicellular mean? That means their body is made up of more than one cell. Now, do you know that the name of the smallest cell? It is mycoplasma bacteria. The largest cell that is the egg of an ostrich. And the longest cell of our body is nerve cell. Life of every living organism begins from a single cell. The number of cell increases as the organism develops except unicellular. Now the cells which you are seeing can be seen under microscope only after staining that is coloring. Now let us come to the next topic that is leaving things grow and develop. They develop from the energy they get from the food. Now you can see the picture of a germination. A seed germinates to form a big plant or tree. Same here in the next picture, a baby bud hatches out of the egg to form an adult bird. So growth can be defined as a permanent irreversible change in the size of an organism as it matures. Now some is having the growth all throughout their life and some stops after a certain time. Example, plants grow all throughout their life, whereas animals stop growing after a certain age. Here is a picture of crystal and glacier. They are also increasing in size. Unlike leaving things, crystals do not grow by adding mass from within their body. Instead, they grow when matching molecules are deposited on the outside of their bodies. That means they are not growing through internal functions. So don't get confused because they will again regain its size if we remove the external addition. Their growth is not at all permanent. Their growth is reversible. Second criteria of leaving things is that leaving things need food. All living organisms require food and water in sufficient quantity to get energy, to perform the various activities and for their growth and development. Now, different organisms use different ways to get their food. A green plant, you can see, can make their food by the process of photosynthesis. With the help of carbon dioxide from the air, water and minerals from the soil, chlorophyll present in their leaves and with the help of sunlight. Plants prepare their food in the form of glucose. Next, coming to the animals, they cannot prepare their food by their own. So they have to depend on either on plants or on animals for their food. Animals who depend on plants are known as herbivores, whereas carnivores feed on the flesh of other animals. 
Now you can see the picture of omnivores who eat both plants and animals. Aquatic animals feed on tiny small insects, worms and plankton available in water. If any of the such creatures do not get food for a very long time, they will finally die. So food is very essential for a living organism. The third characteristic of living things is that living things respire. Living things cannot live without respiration because it is a vital process as all living things need oxygen to stay alive. Respiration takes place in every cell so it is called as cellular respiration. Respiration provides the required energy to the body from the food as the oxygen helps to break or burn the food to provide us energy. Now we will will be seeing that different animals have different respiratory organs. Just have a look. Fish leaves in water and breathe through a pair of gills. Mammals, birds, reptiles breathe through a specialized organ called lungs. We breathe through nostrils oxygen and then pass it to lungs. Some organisms like earthworm breathe through their body surface. Insects breathe through small pores present on the body called spiracles and they are connected to air tubes called trachea. Amphibians breathe through their moist skin when they live in water and breathe through lungs on land. Plants also have specialized organ for breathing called stomata. Stomata are the small pores present in the leaves which help in the exchange of gases. Like animals, plants also give out carbon dioxide during respiration. Remember, there is a difference between breathing and respiration. Breathing means only exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, whereas respiration means the process of getting energy from the food with the help of oxygen. So, we can conclude that all living things need oxygen to stay alive. So, respiration is very essential, whereas non-living things do not respire. The fourth characteristic of living things is that living things reproduce. All living things create their own kind by the process of reproduction. A living things reproduce in order to maintain the continuity and to ensure that they are not extinct. Plants, animals, even bacteria too reproduce to maintain their continuity on the earth. Living things reproduce in two ways, asexual and sexual. What does this mean? Asexual means it involves only one parent for reproduction, whereas sexual means it involves two individuals or parents for reproduction. Here we need one male individual and one female. Now in some lower plants and animals, a new organism is developed from the parent organism without the help of any reproductive organ. This is called as vegetative reproduction. Example you can see amoeba. Amoeba the body divides into two halves and from the two halves a separate new organism is developing. Same here, few other ways of asexual reproduction is fragmentation. Here the body of the organism is divided into small small fragments and from each small fragments they develop into a new organism when they get the favorable environment. Next is budding. Budding is a small outgrowth like structure formed in the parent's body and they get detached from the parent when they find the favorable climate. Next, spore formation. This is seen in different algae and fungi. Spore is a very minute small structures present in the bag called sporangium and they burst out when they get the favorable environment. 
and from there the new individuals develop. The other way of reproduction in plants is through seeds, which is a part of sexual reproduction. Animals reproduce in two ways, either by laying eggs or by giving birth to the babies. Here you can see that reptiles, birds, fishes are laying eggs and the young ones hatch out of the eggs. Whereas, like cow, elephant, human beings, those who are belonging to mammals, give birth to the babies directly. The babies look almost similar to that of the adults. So we can say living things reproduce whereas non-living things do not. The fifth characteristics of living things is that they move. Most animals move from place to place in search of food, shelter to protect themselves from the enemies or to get a favorable climate. This is called locomotion. Animals locomotive by different ways, either by running, swimming, jumping, flying, hopping or gliding. Different animals use different ways of locomotion. Now, plants do not move by their whole body. They remain fixed in the soil, but they can move their body parts according to the stimulus. For example, branches grow towards the sun, whereas the roots spreads to absorb water and minerals from the soil. Now, moonflower always blooms at night, whereas sunflower move towards light. Now, non-living things are moved only by an outside force. For example, we are moving a bed that is by external force. They are being moved from one place to other. So, we can say living things can move but non-living things cannot move by itself. The sixth characteristic of living thing is that they excrete. Excretion is a process of removal of the waste products from our body to continue a normal life process. Diverse methods are used in excretion. Different animals excrete with their specialized organ. Let us have a look. In humans, the main excretory organ is kidney. Urine is formed here. Whereas in the skin, it helps in the excretion of water, salt and urea in the form of sweat. Lungs help to get rid of carbon dioxide through respiration. Plants also excrete. The waste products of plant are generally carbon dioxide, water vapor and oxygen. Carbon dioxide and water vapor are the waste products of respiration and oxygen is the waste product of photosynthesis. These are released through stomata. Some of the waste products are stored in leaves, bark and fruits of a plant. The trees get rid of them when the dead leaves, barks or the ripe fruits fall off from them. They also secret waste products such as gum and raisins. The waste products of plants are generally useful for us. If these waste products are not removed, our cell will stop working and we will fall sick. So we can say, living things excrete whereas non-living things do not. The seventh characteristic of living thing is that they respond to the environment. Now here we will learn two terms that is stimulus which means change in the environment such as temperature, sound, light etc. Whereas response is the way in which the living things react to the changes. Now here in this example you can see the mimosa plant which is generally known as touch me not plant. Their leaves fold inward and droop when you touch or shake and reopen after a few minutes. Here touch is the stimulus and drooping of the leaves is the response. 
growth of a plant in response to a light stimulus. The shoot grows towards the light. Same like animals also respond to stimulus like heat, touch, sound, smell, taste, water and chemicals with the help of five different sense organs. Now if we walk towards a bird, it flies away. Here fear is the stimulus. Again some insects are attracted towards the light and hence they go towards the source of light. Now in this example you can see that when we cross a open dustbin we cover our nose to avoid the strong stinking smell. Hence we can say that all living things, plants or animals respond to stimulus. Now here you can see Mrs. Green who helps you to recall all the seven characteristics of a living thing. Hope you all can now differentiate between a living and a non-living thing based on these characteristics. These characteristics are not shown by any of the non-living thing.